Welcome to another episode of Vice Grip Garage. Guy went ahead and bought another car on the interweb site on scene. This one seems fine. Has it run in 29 years and I'm in northwest North Dakota, which is 600 miles home. I thought I snagged on an LTD or something generic like that, but turns out this is a Grand Torino Elite. That's a thing. They only built them for a couple of years. I think they're kind of rare actually. We're going to load it up on a trailer, whip her down to my brother's house, and I'm just going to try to get her on and then drive it home. Well, here she is, and it's clearly been sitting a long time. I think the feller just scooted her back a little bit. But all the tires are down. Way down. This side of the paint looks pretty darn good. Ouch, she stepped on something sharp. We got tail lightage. That's good. Guns are still there. This side has clearly taken all the sun. Neat little opera windows in her. But I'm not even going to crack her open yet. We're just going to drag her right up on the trailer, get her to my brother's house, try to nose her into the garage. She's a little breezy out here. so. And then we'll pop the hood, pop the trunk, crack this thing open, and see what we're working with. We're about enough air to give each tire about four pounds of air. And then we got no stemage, so we got to pop all the hub capillators off because they're buried down in there, you know. Oh, this one's out. This one's like nine feet long for some reason. Save on the air now. Oh, there goes that one. This one might have a little in it. This one's definitely down. Ouch! I'm gonna need stitches in my knee. Ready? Get it. I got no air over it. There you go. It's kinda. I think it might be going. No. No, it's not. Oh. <laughs> I think that tire might might just not hold air, I guess. Are you ready? Oh, I'm not ready yet. Go ahead. We could get two tires, that would be nice. We got a Delta. Looks like a snow, studded snow tire. This one's going up. Maybe we ought to drag around backwards. So I had planned on bringing her on that way, but since we don't have front tires and there's maybe two PSI in that one, I'm going to bring her on the trailer this way. That way I don't got to just destroy the trailer trying to drag her up. And uh, this skitter's sitting here, so we're just going to give it a bumper tickle. If we hit this in road gear, should be enough force to, you know, get her up there. Can you scoop it? Let's 
dragging on a trailer, so this This one's still up. Can't believe that. But that made it a lot easier having the skipster around. Well, we got her to the house here and what we're going to do is just tilt on it, hook onto the bumper, and we're going to drag her up here and try to scooch her into the garage a little bit more. I actually tried to get the hood open for a sec, but it's stuck. And I don't know if I have a key to the trunk or if it's the same one or how that works, but we'll start back here if we can. It just tells the guy a lot about it. So, we don't really have a plan. We're just going to lift, and we think it might swing, maybe not, and we'll drag it backwards, but I think I'll try to get in it, actually, and if it has brakes, run those. Oh. Well, the guy actually did have two keys on the column. It says, family of fine cars. She's a luxury unit. Let's get this thing open and see what we got back here. Oh, that's thick. Oh, this carpet is, it's real nice. Check out this carpet in here. I just, I haven't seen that before in the trunk, so. It already is luxury, I can tell for sure. We got the factory spare, probably. I think that's an extra, most likely. 
not even sure what. Oh, some nice seat pads maybe for the bleachers. We got <coughs> Taco John's cup. Look at that thing. Probably hang on to that. We got a splash guard. Thermal flex made in the US. A couple tools. Skeleton of some sort of creature. So off to a good start. I think that's the original trunk mat down there. Oops. Gave her a rip. I don't know. I was gonna see if there's any rust down there. No. Oh. Looking pretty good actually. I'll take it. We'll just say it's all good. Get our first close look inside here. I'm gonna adjust on this here with my Adjustomatic 500 in a minute, but we'll just kind of keep bending it until then. Oh, it smells like used knee braces and grain in here. It's just, it's not very pleasant. What is this thing? Hamilton Beach blender. Oh no. Look at that. We got a six by nine. Radio. Oh, I bet that's the uh, original radio. Look at this. That screams 80s. We got the Clarion equalizer. She's a highway fidelity series. Really liked his mids. I'm going to bring the bottoms up and just on that right away. I like how it's exactly where your leg is supposed to swing in. So you can just smash it off of that. Door panels are just, that's fresh. This sun fade is actually not sun fade. This is factory fade. It's a luxury car thing. Got some wood grain in here. That'll go back with some super glue. Oh, I already fixed it. I'm trying to get this seat to go forward. There you go. Oh, it just, the smell gets worse as you go back. Look at these seats, so. How many buttons do we got? 68? 70, probably. I like it. We got a mouse playground, a comb. That looks good. And what is this? Oh no, we got tube sockage. I'm just, yeah, we'll just let those lay there for a minute. You can actually see where some of the sat color difference there. We get in this side here. Yeah, no surprises. It's leaking or what the deal is? We got Mirage headliners. You know, she's tolerable, I guess I would say. Oh, look at that fresh carpet under there. And a worm. We'll just put that back. As long as you line it up, you just you can't tell that way. See? Just like that. Well, I could be wrong, but I think a lot of these are options that were upgraded on. We got the tachometer, you know, and a couple other things over there as well. And these came with 351s. This one's got a 400 in her, and I think you can get a 460. And then you had to upgrade to get to the AC as well. And I think they had an auto digital temperature thing in here, but I don't know if that one does. So this car came pretty loaded up. It doesn't have, they have an auto magical roof on them, I think. This one didn't have that, had the vinyl obviously. But kind of a competitor for the Chrysler Cordoba or like the Chevy Monte Carlo. And it's, you know, it's not a very good looking car, but they tried. I'm not sure why you need these go-kart bumpers running down the sides. This one got snipped off. But on this side, they're all intact. Oh, no. Take that back. That one's gone. Might have lost her on the highway. Well, let's snip this power barn open. Like I said, the guy said it's supposed to be a 400, but I don't, I don't know how to tell that, I guess. So hopefully there's a sticker on it somewhere and we can just clean that up and take a look. Oh yeah, that's good. Oh, 
Well, it's bad, basically. The guy said it had, you know, a little mice damage and it's it's pretty level severe actually. Look at this, Sean. What, is that a spark plug wire? It's supposed to be. There's the other one. Basically, I'll get you in here, but every wire is just gone. Oh, four, four post relay, completely missing. Great. Well, I'm about 21, no, 16.4% confident this is gonna go down the road. Is this bent or is that just the way it is? Let's get some juice on the hinges. So we don't have to fight that anymore. Let me get you down in here. So here's the plug wires. They're just, you know, they've been eaten off. All these are just absolutely destroyed. I think there's supposed to be an end on that one. I'm not sure what it goes to. Oh man. These are intact at least. Oh, I gotta check that DuraSpark box thingy. Where's that at? It's usually, here it is. Oh, these are good. That's, these, you know, either they don't work or you find cars and then they just, they don't work in them. But the good news is if you get one that works, it'll stop working. So, wires have already been changed on. That wire, whatever that is, is gone. This is eaten off. What is that? I, I'm not even sure where to start with this one. We might have to... You got a shop vac? Oh, yeah. We'll have to get the mouse sucker in here and try to clean some of this stuff up because it just keeps it blowing up in the face. And then, I don't know. I just... This one's gonna be tough. Wow. really cleaned up now and got the sticker cleaned up and well it's either a 351 or a 400 thanks Ford appreciate that a lot so now I think yeah so we discovered the carbs locked we'll get some juice on this going see if we can break that free and then I got to start calling for parts because I know I'm gonna need that relay and we're gonna need wires and I gotta check and see if it still even turns over I guess I should probably do that first yep all right I'm gonna go down you go sideways ready one two three so basically we can get to it from the bottom end but can't it's too much so what we're gonna do here is Sean's gonna guide my foot onto the socket and I'm gonna come over here and do a Yamasaki kick on it and see if I can get her to spin off that way. Someone watch the cranks now so we can see if it moves. Yep, it moved a little bit. Okay, ratchet it back. It feels so bad on my foot, like I can feel stuff grinding. Okay, bring it back. Oh, no. We just tighten the bolt into the <laughs> crank. All right, Sean, hit the throttle. See if we got this thing opened up. Stop, now. Stop, okay, hold on. Again. Wow, teamwork. She just wants to go wide open and stay. That's fine with me. Oh, I think that's, oh, that was free. Actually, I'll get some brake clean in here first, then juice. Well, about 48 months now, we've been trying to get a socket on the crank snout pulley here. 
and there's just no room to get anything done. You can't see nothing. The fan is just right here. Yeah, I don't. I just, I don't get it. I don't know what that means, but it doesn't sound good. Get on there. We might have to take the fan off. I think we're gonna have to. And the shroud, because if we keep slipping, we're gonna end up in the lower skin. But I already, the belt was pretty tight, and I tugged like heck on the fan blades, and the engine did not turn over. To me, it feels locked, but we're never gonna figure it out until we get this wrench on there, and it's just not going good. So here's where we're at. We only got about an inch rotation on that bad boy. Sean would bring her this way, and I'd kick her that way, and it's stuck. So probably got a ridge and a piston sticking in here. Could be a stuck valve too, I guess. But we'll start by taking the plugs out, and then we'll try to figure out how to get some juice down in there and keep working on it a little bit. I just dealt with this on a big block Ford pickup and I spent all day and I couldn't get her spinning fast enough to fire. So we might be headed down that same exact path. Dang it. Was there even boots on that side? Yeah, there are boots on there, but. Look at, I've never seen them eat that much of it. Holy. Yeah. Should we just, let's just mow the yard or something. Well, what is even going on there? It's just Burn a little it. carbon on it. Well, there's water. There's water in there too. Oh, hey, let's pull a dipstick. See the alkali built up on it. Is there oil in it? Taste it. What's, gas? Gas? I bet someone tried to start it a million times, washed the cylinder walls, and then it rusted up. Then they point all the plugs backwards, so they're even harder to get to. They have this in here too, and you need this. Yeah, I'll put that right up top. Put it right where you have to work on everything here. Current situation is that. Well, I think it's, what is it, an hour later? Yeah, somewhere in there. We finally got her out. And it was just, we were out of options. I mean, it's. What happened was there was a little spring or something laying in the head that wasn't letting our ratchet come down far enough. But what we did was got the ratchet in there, then we used a pry bar and put pressure against the ratchet. Then we put a cheater pipe 400 on the ratchet, shot some juice in there, mixed it with this juice, and then I got so mad my back neck got hot and it came out. So now, oh yeah, we still have four more left to do over there. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Great. I'm just waiting for him to try to get that back one. We got a wobbly walker 300 on down there. Yeah, I don't know what the pry bar is too, and Sean keeps hitting me in the face with this cheater pipe. So, you know, the engineering on these spark plugs is just, it's precise how all these go in and out. And these guys are just stuck in there. This is the last one. I think the sun's about to go down. So we got a lot of work done today. This one came out and half the porcelain snapped off and you can see it's brown. So we didn't do that. She's been fired on like that. So I'm sure that cylinder wall looks real nice. Hopefully it shot her out the old tailpipe by now. So now we're just going to start squirting some juice down all the cylinders. We may end up just filling her up with ATF. Probably not. Yeah, we probably will. And we'll keep cranking on this thing, see if we can get her freed up. What's in my face? Blood. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess I'm going to pull a valve cover off now because nothing is probably stuck there and I'm wasting my time. But. I don't know, maybe it'll make a guy feel better. I'm gonna choose this side because it's only got 94,612 things, plus this alien looking tube thing with a rod that comes out of the back. Don't forget the tuna can over there. Oh yeah, and then the tuna can with the weird hoses hanging off of it. That side, it's never coming off. I, I don't understand that. 
So we'll pull this side off, see if a valve is stuck or something, I guess. Okay. I want you to get in here and get the bolt at the foot on the very back of the valve cover that you can't even see for some reason. Would you go on ahead and tell me, is there a bolt back there too? So what we're doing here is we got this ratchet strap onto the ratchet and we're just trying to get a little mower out of them. Is it going? And we got about an eighth inch more last time. Now we're going the other direction. We'll see how much we can get out of it. Okay, stop. I need to reset this. It's going to slip. Go ahead. Okay, tighten it up again. Oh, he got bound in there, huh? He's bound. Okay. I think we're just going to loosen the bolt. Yeah, stop. This is something, this is bending. Okay, well, this is good news. Well, we just completed Operation Bloodbath. We've got five quarts of ATF in here and a bottle of Berryman. Or no, what was that? Marvel Mr. Oil. That's what it was. I'd say there's only about two quarts in the engine. The rest is on the floor. Yeah, it's down there. That's why I try to not do this stuff. Is it just it's messy and then you roll around in that for seven weeks afterwards. But she's full up. We'll let it sit. We're gonna hit some wobble pops, let some time pass. Awesome. And then we'll come back and try her again. But let's forget this thing broke free. There's just not much a guy can do. Well we uh we got it with a big kick and uh <laughs> Bob's <laughs> he must have been leaning over the side and it just exploded. Oh, Got man. Chris in the face, blew out all the way over here. But we got past the stuck point, so now we'll get down there and keep kicking on her and bring her around. And it's only taken all day. The sun's getting ready to go down. I got a battery rigged up down here, so we're going to just try to hot wire on it. Jeez, this stuff is everywhere. See if she springs around. Nothing. There we go. It's going. So we'll put a little bit more juice down the cylinders. Probably just some WD. Let her soak in a little bit more while we clean up. And then I guess we're on to uh, spark at that point. What's in my teeth? I don't know. Guy went ahead and pushed her outside. We got to clean up this mess. Looks like murder she wrote or something. And then a guy also figured mozzle the greasy engine while we're at it. If we're gonna be in here monkeying around, no sense in leaning on all this ATF. So we'll run her down with the hose and some degreaser and put some shine to her. And then we won't get so dang dirty working on this old thing. Well, we got her scrubbed down and it's looking pretty good. And on another positive, all four wheels are moving. None of these are locked up. I just realized that. That one's actually still holding there. So none of the brakes are froze or any of the wheel bearings. So that's positive. And she's broke free. So things are starting to turn around a little bit. I did forget to mention we had the valve cover off. And I just wanted to see if any of the valves were stuck. You just ping them with a hammer. It's kind of hard to explain, but you'll feel it and you'll hear it when the valves are loose. And all that looked good. We had one that was a little sticky, but we worked it out of it. But we're just gonna let this dry for tonight, clean up the garage, clean up our mess, and hit her again in the morning. Well, good morning. Now it's afternoon, day two. We went ahead and slept in a little bit. We kind of had a rough night. 
And then we were waiting on parts, and they didn't come into O'Reilly till about 11. But we're ready to keep going on the electrical. We stayed up till, I think it was like 1.30, something like that. Putting around on the electrical last night, so I'll dip you in there so you can kind of see what we got going on. But we're ready to see if it turns over by the key, and then we can test spark, and then I got to figure out the charging system and the voltage relay and radio suppressor and all the digital stuff that I don't like to do, basically. So kind of a 32,912 foot overview here. We got the starter relay we got to figure out. That's a big one, and I think this is this is what I'm going to go with. Kind of just wired up, patched some of the stuff in here, taped up some things that might blow some sparks, put a fitting on. And I'm going to start with this configuration. Dropped in a battery. We got the Century charger running on that just in case. Uh, figured out the field wires and such from the charging whirler down there. Got these all pinned down. And this is where the voltage relay plugs in. And this fourth pin is either not used or it's for a radio suppressor, which I don't really care about that much. As long as it charges and we're getting spark, I'm happy. i got to chase these over there and figure because some of those are disconnected. Got these connected back up here. And I think that was the dash light and 12 volt power taped these up last night as well made a big splice in there big chunk of wire was eaten there so that's where we're at all of this gets tucked in back behind here but for testing i'm just gonna let her just dangle on the cliff here so what we'll do right now is i got my though i got spark 400 plugged in i don't even think i need this sparker later but it looks cool so i'll put it there and I already did this earlier, but I'm going to show you guys. It does have spark uh, for two reasons. One, I got severely shocked. And then also I saw some lightning jumping off of this good wire here. But just hook your eyes into this light bulb here and Sean will crank it over. I don't think it went off that time. So... Either it did, and I didn't see it, or I don't have spark now. Either way, that's pretty good. And I was going to put some more juice in the cylinders, but it's still shooting some out. So I think I'll let that be for a minute. So for now, Sean's going to help me put plugs in. And then we're going to move on to sparkulator wires, I guess. Uh, once we get the lightning hoses in, then we'll see if we can get her fired off. I'm probably not even going to worry about that until we hear it fire. Sparkulators are in. We're going to work on the lightning hoses. This goes faster if you got a pal over here and you just hand them the old one. They match them up and you just pop in the new one. Oh yeah, it goes, it goes this one spins counterclockwise. Oh yeah, you're saying that. So give me one that long. Yeah, you can do that. I'll just get the lights for you. How about that? Finish the valve cover gasket. I disconnected the fuel line down here. I ran in this professional system and I primed her up and we sprung a leak up here. I was looking at this earlier, but I got lazy and didn't change it, but she just shoots fuel out. So I'm gonna change that little chunk there, prime this thing up and see if we can get it to idle for just a couple minutes, not too long, cause I still gotta drop the oil eventually. All right, we're gonna try a first fire. I got some engineered fuel over here. It's probably at least 15 years old and was under the bench, but should work. I'm just gonna dump way too much of that in the carb. Sean's gonna crank on it. We're not gonna run it long though because we don't have a valve cover gasket on the driver's side. I just wanna hear it make some noise before I, you know, throw some more money at it. So, here we go. Let it rip. Stop. Stutter fluid. Rip on it. We must not have 
power. Okay, go. Okay. It wants to, but not quite. I wonder how much voltage you're getting at the coil, because it's like four plus relays, one of these goes to the coil to shoot 12 volts right to the coil during crank. Sure. We got weak voltages. Well, basically we're not getting enough spark to the coil here. I just, I gotta wrap my brain around why. Well, basically we just stared at it for 20 minutes and then I cleaned the coil contacts and put a cap and rotor on it. And we're gonna give it a shot again and see what happens. fires well now we're uh now we're on the fuel we're gonna have to figure out fuel i got a boat tank we'll probably run it off that for a few minutes and go from there we've got the line fixed to the fuel make it happener i got my squirt bottle with some sort of gas in it uh we checked the oil there's some in it i got a fire extinguisher over here battery chargers is on so I think we'll give her a rip, see what happens. I'm going to prime it up a little bit. Okay, go ahead. Look at all this rust. It's been flying out the exhaust. It is very smoky. Some of that's that ATF, but there's also a ton of blow by, so. Carb's not working, no accelerator pump, that's not surprising. But before we go any farther, we should uh, probably change on the oil a little bit. The gauge says we got no oil pressure pieces and it's clanking and banging in here like crazy. So we'll drop that down, see how much metal we got in the pan, and if there's any Legos or acorns or stuff, and then put some new oil in it and then we'll just, you know, test on it again. Keep sending it. All right, dropping the oil here. What was in there, Sean? That's water. Oh, this is the most inconvenient. Now see, Ford likes to put that bolt right against that support bar that does nothing. Well, it did the back here. There we go. Oh, she's good and milky. Hope that's it's like a gray. Gray. So definitely water in there. Hopefully not a head gasket, just from sitting. Oh yeah, look at that water coming out. 
Look at this filter. Milkshake. Also, that's not the reason we didn't have oil pressure. The line was actually eaten by mice back here. So I think we got that back on her. So we'll throw some, this might be the factory uh, thing there, Motorcraft, I think that's for it. Live long time, oil filter. And then we'll fire it back up and see if that, you know, there's just some severe banging and knocking going on in here. But we'll see if we can ignore it for a few more minutes and it might just come back out of it. Well, I went ahead and put this in here, the Lucas. That's supposed to help. And then today's flavor is, we're going to go with the old diesel oil again. This has got advanced technology in it down here. And there's some words in red. Makes it seem more important. So we'll pop this in and see if we can get our pressures back. I don't know if I could do this one-handed. Oh, I got it. Well, we're going to clean the carburetor off and then I'll break her down and build on it. This is actually working really good. Way faster. <laughs> Got the carburetor busted off here and she is full of gunk. Pretty bad. Uh, we got the needle free, you know, we just soaked her down and brake clean before we popped it open, but I'll put all, I'll just rebuild the whole thing since we got it apart, but there's a lot of just crud and junk in here and uh, the accelerator pump shot. So hopefully I got enough juice to get this out. It's like a, almost like a mud down in there. Fuel make it happeners back on. Had to adjust the float. It didn't have enough seat pressure. Yeah, we were pumping fuel out the vents, got that fixed, tore up the gasket. This kit didn't have the right gasket, so I tore up the original one. So I have the wrong gasket on the top. We ran it for maybe two, three minutes. I'm going to throw some tiny ice cubes in her, try to keep her cooled down. And I'm not sure how much fuel we got left. Oh, there's a couple gallons in there yet. And keep running her and trying to get her. She was idling there for a minute, but I got to get down in here and percolate on these. And I think we got vacuum leaks all over and a bunch of miscellaneous other things to kind of go through. But we're slowly getting there. My goal, hopefully, by the time the sun goes down, is make sure the transmission works or does something. That would be neat. Okay, so the first rebuild, I'll call it, I didn't even take the Venturi assembly out because I was afraid of breaking it because it was really stuck in there. Put it back on. Ran great if you're in the throttle, but it wouldn't idle. And your idle circuit is basically all in those little tiny little, you know, juice shooters in there. So I took it all apart again, did pry it off, cleaned out a bunch of crap, put it back on, and she fires right up. You want to hit it, Chris? There you go. 30 years sitting, locked engine yesterday, idling today. And uh, we got the thermostat to open. Uh, we're not gonna do it right now because it's low on transmission fluid, but we got drive and reverse kind of, it quit, but it, you know, moved. So now I think we're gonna drop this fuel tank out, see what kind of surprises we get out of that deal. Because, you know, we got nine minutes of daylight left, so this is a struggle. Yeah. See if we can get that cleaned up and get that back in, and then we'll try to get it running off its own tank once again. So making some progress. It's been a hell of a fight, but we're getting there. Sean's pulling the tank for me, and he's doing a good job. There's This has tank straps, too, and then the sending unit's on this side over here. Actually pretty not so bad to get to. And this thing's been backed into something. I can't believe that it didn't pop and shoot some juice out. So a guy changed his mind. Instead of dropping the tank right away, I decided to try to suck some fuel from there up to here. And thought that if a guy just kept running five gallons through it, we could flush it out. Well, we weren't getting nothing up here. So I crawled back and pulled the sending unit out. And I figured the sock was plugged. And I was right. And probably can't see that but it's just plugged solid with varnish can't blow through this or nothing so I'm gonna try to go ahead and just clean this out 
And these are really cheap and readily available. So I'm going to do the right thing and just stick this one back in and uh, just run it. I got it fairly clean and just laid her in like that. And I just used the old mouth sucker later and got her running into the tub here. And I'm just going to let it flush out not only the pickup tube there, but also the gas in the tank. But I'm not seeing any rust chunks or anything coming out, which is a really good sign actually, because I need that fuel capacity if I'm going to do 600 miles in this thing. And, you know, we'll just kind of forget that we haven't even gotten to brakes or the rear end or the transmission or, you know, tires. But I got to have fuel. So, so far this is going pretty good. Auto eject. Well, it's 8 million early o'clock, day three. And I've done nothing today but spill my coffee twice. And it's actually, uh, it's actually more towards noon. But, you know, we're coming around. We're getting there. Today's agenda is brakes and transmission. Preferably transmission before brakes. Jessica was nice enough to shoot over to Minot, which is about an hour from where we're at. We're in a really small town. They don't have a lot of parts, so. We got the wheels, tires busted off. We're gonna figure out some rubber. We got a brake master that needs changed. And then we gotta bleed the system and hopefully not strip the bleeders out on it. And I'm also gonna fine tune the carburetor today with the old vacuum gauge. If all goes well, this thing might scoot around on its own power today. This one's got the dinner plate brakes on the front. Like I was saying earlier, the great news is everything's spinning already. Normally them are locked up after sitting that long. And then we got the good drums in the back. These are the guys I'm used to. But I just got looking in here. I'm not used to this, but dang near rust-free car. Got some surface rust, but there's no holes in this thing. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. I'm really used to the weight reduced models by now. I guess I haven't looked over here yet. Oh, all the same. Yeah. It's in great shape. I think it was taken care of fairly well. She was really undercoated at one point or another. I'm probably not going to take these off and just say we did. They're going to be a pain. They're pretty much going to be seized on there. And this one. Sure. I think if we get some actual brake pressure on them. See if they stop up. Might hit this with a Brillo pad or something. Just clean on it a smidge. Probably won't. This brake line doesn't pop. We'll be in business. It's got some flexibility still. This one doesn't look rotted up there. So we might look out, but what we got going on right now is when you hit the brake pedal, she goes all the way down to the floor and then she doesn't shoot back up. So them seals or spring in there is all gummed up. You could buy rebuild kits for them, but no one carries them for this thing. It was cheaper just to get the whole unit, 16 bucks. So I'm lubing up these lines here. I'm gonna try to get that popped off before Jessica gets back with the new one. And then I can start soaking down the bleeders as well. If you strip them off, you're gonna have a bad day there, fellas. <laughs> Hard to adjust and all the smoke is just blasting you right in the teeth. But I got about five more on the old gauge o matic here. Now I'm gonna count the screw turns and then make sure I get them evened out and adjust the idle just a smidgen again. Automatic, I don't know what this says, probably eight, six, 
650, 700. And I might have it just a little bit higher while we work on the transmission because we'll just be, you know, grabbing the gears. But it's starting to run smoother and smoother. I got some Berryman. We'll give her the Italian tune up here in a minute. Clean up the valves, combustion chamber, maybe even knock loose some of those rings on the old power pumpers there. But she's starting to come around pretty good. It's running pretty smooth actually right now. I just can't believe this thing was locked up yesterday. It's just mind bottling. Transmission's pretty much empty. Just gonna dump a couple quarts in and then we'll dial that in later. I don't have enough fluid around here, but I don't want to burn the pump up. Threw a couple quarts in, dropped it and drive. We got a transmission, fellas. I'm gonna let it just sit like this. Hopefully warm up the transmission a little bit. And then I'll let her run in reverse for a while. Then I'll run it through all the gears. And then I'll uh, check the fluid level again. I got the guys bringing back some Lucas stuff. We'll drop down in there as well. But I mean, so far, of course, we don't know if it slips or anything, but we got an engine. Seems like we've got a transmission. So as long as it stays cool and we can figure out the stop elators, I think we're in pretty good shape. We'll be down to little stuff like, oh, there's the safety squints. You know, do we got stop lights? Maybe straighten out this license plate. <laughs> you know, you don't want to get pulled over for a bent one. And I think that's it. We'll just, you know, hit the road. Now that the old girl's warmed up, I'm going to give her the Italian tune up here. I like to dump this just straight down the car, let it eat on it. It'll fix everything good as new. She's tuned. Monkeying around a little bit in here, trying to find all these vacuum leaks. Fix that one. And uh, Sean found this one, so we fixed that one as well. Now we kept hearing some tremendous, you know, sucking sounds back here, and we traced her down to this one, which I knew went to the vacuum accumulator down there. And I'll crawl under there quick. That one is just completely missing. Mice ate it off. So we had a huge vacuum leak down there. So we cut some line off of our, we're calling it the tuna can. We don't know what it does. There's so many hoses on this thing. Yeah, that box. We borrowed on some line from that and I'll just crawl under and snip that on. And then I'm going to redo the air fuel mixture screws again because the vacuum is going to change tremendously. And then we'll readjust the idle once again. Then I think we'll have all the lines we need plugged up. These go to the air cleaner rest of these that are not needed are doing something or plugged off so i think we'll be right as rain i don't want to lay on my back so i talked sean into juicing up the rear end here i don't know if we're doing it wrong or the interwebs is letting us down but apparently you got to pull the axle shaft and roll the car over to get the oil out and we're not doing that use the gm because they got you know a plug that you fill it so we're gonna just kind of squirt it in this hole back here just so we know there's at least some oil in it and then we'll just run it here's what the old master looks like and it is full of just some nasty crud but again we press the pedal the plunger is coming forward and she ain't shooting back so we'll get this one off we'll get this one off well we'll get this one off all right i guess i'm gonna need the old tanya harding and just Give her a couple knocks. It's kind of hard to see, but we got the filter in and she's pulling fuel off the factory tank back there. And I was able to clean it up good enough. The old fuel gauge even works, which is really nice, especially on the first blast, because then I don't got to figure out fuel mileage. It's probably going to get 10, 11, I'm guessing, but we'll see. And I got her jammed up in overdrive right now again. 
And I like to just let them run like this for, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. Let everything get nice and hot. And we're just waiting on the master cylinder still. Jessica's in town just partying it up, you know. Well, I gotta get that part from her. And then after that, we'll bleed the brakes and then, you know, we'll, we're gonna test on it probably right there in the driveway, I'm guessing. New brake masters then. I usually just bleed them in the car because it's literally the same thing as bench vice bleeding it. But I was bored and I just bled it in the vice this time. Chris is in there, he's gonna pump a lead on it and I'll do the, and I don't know, just start on the line closest to a master and just kind of work your way around her there. It'll come back around. Yeah. Yeah. That one is stripped, doesn't do anything. Yeah, and the drinker side rear does nothing, so we'll forget about that. We got decent breakage up here. Sean's cleaning it up with the brass whirly woo. And then you ease it down with some spray. That cleans on it and they spin easier. And this side's got about 72% stop later power, and I already kind of worked that around and cleaned her up. So basically what I'm saying is we have about 62.4% front brakes combined and that's good enough for me. We're going to put the tires on here in a minute and then we'll do some live on the ground forward backer transmission. And then I might even just kind of scoot it out and bring it back here a little bit a couple times. So we need to mount these tires up. And the nice thing about these small towns is we stopped by the Stanley Welding Shop here. He's got a tire machine and we let him know what we were trying to do and he said, yeah, just throw them on there and do your thing. So we're going to go in here and throw these tires on real fast. This one was a little bit used on. This one's got some miles on her, but there's still plenty of tread. But we'll go in here and watch Sean mount them up and my plan is to do absolutely nothing if possible. Let's show them what we got here. What are, this is a light wall? That's wrong. Oh, that is the wrong tire. Completely. <laughs> wow. That's, that's great. It's supposed to be white letter, like this one. Yay, eBay. So here's the flavor we're going with. Got the Galaxy R1 Radials. And somehow they packed one white letter with one white wall. So I'm gonna have three white letter and one will just flip the black out. But, you know, I just wanted the 80s to just shoot out at our peepers. And I think this is gonna do it. And then I'll do the right thing and just leave these just like they are. You know, they look fine. Up a little bit there. <laughs> I'm gonna work on putting the fuel filter in for the tank up front. And Sean started vacuuming out a little bit. We predicted there was gonna be a lot of mouse stuff just doing this in the cab. She's trying to eliminate a little bit of that. And I'm gonna take that filter and just run it in line from the factory line before it shoots up to the fuel pump there and I'm going to try to make it easy to get to because I'll probably have to swap it out a bunch of times on the way home and then there's this filter up here as well but I want to catch it in that one if I can well if a guy and a girl remembers I only got three white letter tires yeah this side's got the sun fade on it so what I do is I pick the good side and I call that my Craigslist side. And this is clearly the Craigslist side. I mean, it's brand new. So we're gonna make sure we get white letters out on this side. And I'll go grab the garden hose in a minute and we're gonna soak down the capillators and then we'll snap those on. And I think we got a completed unit. Actually, there's about 48 gallons of free all on this door here. I gotta wipe off yet. And then we'll be ready to go. Well, I was putting the poverty rim on and just barely touched the valve stem and this hit me right in the teeth at about 700 miles an hour and just right deleted this one. So we're going to do the right thing and just pull the 
factory spare out of the trunk that hasn't seen daylight in 45 years and see if we can get some air into this puppy because basically we just want to try to do a burnout out here is our goal at this point look at these caps though they're just it's looking good that's the one without the letters here i'll show you the ones with the letters this is what i was trying to go for does it have air yeah Oh, just throw it right straight on then. It's just a good tire. Is, that a, is this siped? It's seen yeah. it's seen some tread on her or seen some wear. Oh, it's seen tread on. Yeah, I've seen some tread. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this one will work fine. You can't even tell the difference between that one and this one by the time we get the poverty cap. Ah, on that. This is so oh, old. Oh, it's got a white wall. It is a Michelin. It says made in France, but the tire size is an HR78-15, and that's how you know if she's, that's old. So I like to run some spray paint around these, and you can use marker or tape or whatever, but if it's a rig you don't care about, just tsk. And then when you put the hood back on, you just line up those paint marks. And when you shut this hood, these body lines are just gonna be right on the money, guaranteed. Say something about lions? Yeah, oh, two okay. of them. Right down. She likes to tilt this way. There's a little bit of air in this tire. Oh, we never even touched it. Yeah, there was in there, but not a lot. Oh. Well, we got the compressor that doesn't have rings in it. Took three days and approximately 947 hours combined between, I don't know how many guys. And a lot of wobble pops, but I think it's ready. Locked engine, no wiring, no brakes, questionable transmission, first time driving out on its own power in 29 years. That's how. We got no keys. I got them. It's fine. Well, it rolled 15 feet and the brake pedal stuck down. So that's good. It's basically telling me, let's do a burnout. This is as far as we've driven it, so I agree. You gotta test on the transmission sooner or later. So let's just see what happens. Transmission works! Bradley wanted to wash on the car a little bit over here, so he's got the hose and bucket of water and suds out. He's gonna put the shine on it. Maybe we'll try to dig them grass and stuff out of a poverty lid there. Probably not. I like it personally. It balances up the wheels. But we're gonna get her shine down. Maybe we can see out of the windows and stuff and then Tomorrow we're going to go rip on her, I just, I kind of had it today. We're going to enjoy some family and play with the kids and stuff, and now that we know she's running and whatnot, we're going to shut her down for today, enjoy ourselves, and hit it tomorrow. Guy's trying to get the tail lip it's it's nice going, and yeah, I'm not getting any power to the circuit on the fuse block. And it's got two main leads off of the battery down here and I traced them back one of those I had to replace the guy can get his brain down in there and I got juice there so then what I did was I flipped the fuse panel over and there's two circuit bars I, I drew a schematicals on the dash here and these are the yellow ones coming into the fuse blockage so this is circuit one circuit two I got juice here this side is really rusted on the outside 
when you flip it over, I got power. So what I'm going to do is I made this and I'm going to disconnect my main circuit, plug it into this guy, and then I'm going to take each of these leads, put it on the front of the fuse panel and push my fuses into them. So instead of the circuit bar, this will power each of my circuit and it's courtesy blower, dash lights, tail lights, and I can't remember the other one, sunroof. Nope, that's wrong. So I'm going to put this in and see if we can get the rear light bulbs to light up. Well, the brake wiring plan, although executed properly 82.4%, did not work because apparently there's some shorts or wiring issues coming back into the trunk here. I should have checked the old continuity, but I didn't. So someone sent me this on my Facebook page. So I went ahead and borrowed on that. Got a horn button professionally wired her up through here and got her eased back through the window here and originally we took the lens off and laid them right up against here but if the bulb's not in there we weren't getting enough juice out of it so we're gonna have to kick them out here but if the key's forward and you hit the brakes we got I'm gonna stop lights so I think I got one more piece to do and then I'm done, ready to go. Down here, I think I'm gonna put, you know, where my new gasket is now leaking. Great. I'm gonna put another fuel filter right here in a service loop or something and hope that all the sediment kinda comes down here instead of shooting up front. I do have another filter up there, but that one would be easier to change instead of trying to get underneath the car. And oh, Sean put wipers on for me because you just never know. Good morning. After getting the brake lights sorted out and adding the additional fuel filter down here right by the tank, kind of just knocked off and enjoyed some family and had some fun, which was really nice just kind of laying around for once. But I think Gary, the Elite is ready to go. We're gonna jump in, just try to do a test drive. And basically, if I can ease around the block here and I can grab into that overdrive, I'm gonna run it down to the gas station, fill it up, and we're just gonna point it east because I got 600 miles to go and you ain't gonna get any closer if you just sit here and fart around, you know? So I'm just hoping we got transmission and then obviously we got first gear after our little smoke show, but I need that overdrive. So let's jump in this thing and scoot her around here a little bit. All right, first drive on the road, 29 years. And just a few days ago, this thing had a locked up engine. Come on, Gary. Seatbelt buzzer works all of a sudden. That's neat. We know it's got reverse back out of the garage. How long is this driveway? I just, I can't see nothing. I'm kind of just guessing. All right, I'm gonna manually shift it just so I can count the gears. First is nice and solid. Second, we're good, we got second. She ain't running very hot today, but I guess she is cold. First gear, second gear, kind of slowish. We got three gears. Well, I mean, that's, that's really all I need. I'm not too picky. If I can run 50, 55, you know, it's going to be probably a 12, 13 hour day, but that's okay. I mean, these seats, I mean, what is this? A button down couch? Probably. I'm going to top this thing off. Boy, I'm losing oil pressure quick. I'm just going to put something over that oil pressure gauge so I don't keep looking at it. That seems fine. Yeah, just 
hide it like that. There we go. And uh, yeah, we'll point her east. And I think our first big stop is Jamestown. And we'll calculate the miles per gallon if we even make it that far. And then we got a solid idea of how many miles we can run, and we'll just keep on going. Well, I squeezed in about 14 gallons. More importantly, I got a coffee and a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit that's on the floor down there in the dirt. I mean, today's off to a good start. I don't know what that noise was, just ignore it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and plunge her onto the interstate up here. We got nothing else to lose, gotta find out sooner or later. I already fixed the oil gauge, which I did have a piece of tape over, but I took it off to confirm, and it's right on zero. That's fine. Temperature is still an operating area. You know, Ford, it just says, I'm cold, or shut it down. And if I keep it right under, shut it down, we'll be fine. So I'm just gonna keep my eye on the temp gauge, basically. But let's plunge it out on the interstate here, see what we got. Doesn't help. 50, well, She's a little squirrely, but the wind is blowing about 148 knots. A little bit of a shake in the front, but it ain't bad. Listen, 29 years parked, I'll take it. I am marginally impressed, actually. This is, I don't think I've ever taken an actual seized engine, got it running, and then put it right on the road without tearing the engine down. Coming over! I don't have any blinkers. Everything is, you know, kind of okay, so. <laughs> Got her up to 60. Even at 60 though, it's only got about five oil pressure. That could become an issue. Been cruising at about 60, 65 for a while now. And she's staying cool. That's really good. But this is the concern, is it keeps going from the bottom of, I don't know, normal to zero. So up here, about 40 miles is my nut. And well, I think what I'll do is I'll stop and get some, uh, some of that STP snake oil stuff, you know, it's like honey. And that'll fix those bearings. It makes them brand new, basically. We'll put maybe four bottles of that in there and see if it brings it up a little bit. Heard something dragging, so I pulled over here. Fuel tank strap is just hanging. I think we took this out. We were gonna drop the tank, but we never did. So, I don't know if one strap holds a full tank very good. I guess we're gonna find out. Kinda just ease that back there with my suitcase. First little section done, about 50 miles, something like that. I'm gonna top her off again. The gas gauge didn't move, I think she's stuck up. So I'm hoping this clicks off at about four. That'd be just a little bit over 10 miles to the gallon. do the math on that because <clears throat> I don't know how to do that stuff and then we've got our approximate fuel mileage and then we don't have to rely on that old crusty gauge now I'm gonna swing up the road here I think there's an oh 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 part store up there and get some of that STP snake oil throw that in the engine and keep on cooking I think the oil pressure is gonna be our issue today that and I don't know why, but I didn't balance these tires. And that's just, my teeth are hurt. As long as the rear end or the transmission doesn't go out on us, I think we might, you know, well, it's too early to tell. I mean, we're literally like two 190 seconds into this, so great. That's not gooder. It's 
not coming out of the expansion tank or the overflow tube. It's actually leaking all the way down the inside here. So I'm going to do the right thing since we're in a major town and I could get a radiator. But I'm just going to put some radiator stop leak in there, about three or four of those. Grab a couple gallons of coolant and just keep going. I'm also not going to check the oil and just dump these in and that should fix it. This is pretty good stuff. It takes a minute to get in there. And we'll see how she acts on the highway. So now we have to add potential blown radiator to our low oil pressure. And we're 50 miles in. Well, we'll just jump back on the highway here. I do got a little bit more oil pieces. It's off of the bottom of the, hey, this is where you should be. And temperature never rose, but my fear is, is that's gonna split the rest of the way. I just filled up in Carrington, small little town. They got a roundabout. Uh, the gas mileage is really plummeted. My fuel gauge no longer works. There's about, we can see the car rocking. It's gotta be 50, 60 mile an hour wind out here. It's crazy. So I can't film outside. Check the oil, that seems to be doing fine. Radiator has slowed to a persistent fast dribble rather than a spray, so that's good. Still have no oil pressure. It is not heating up though. So I guess we just stab her back and drive and keep going. I still don't understand the seat belt. There's 19 different straps to get, to get this thing on. Here we go. pulling into a town called Rothsay and if I did my math magicianals right this is as far as I can go on a tank basically still not heating up still don't have much for oil pressure I'm gonna check that radiator leak check on the fuel filters fill up again kick the tires and kind of just pretend that I'm doing stuff and keep on rocking also after spending hours and hours and hours in the car I found out that I have armrests, so that's nice. Would have been nice to know a long time ago. Great. Let's see, the filter's pretty skunky looking gas. Hopefully by the time I get home, this will kind of rejuvenated and flushed out. No big crud in there, so that's okay. The new lock ring gasket, she's leaking. So I'm gonna leave that and just pretend I didn't see it. Well, I officially rolled it over to 39,000. Yeah, that speed was about five off. Still running cool. And it actually has better oil pressure if I keep the RPMs a little higher than I'd like to, but about 27, 2800. So we'll keep cruising, about 180 miles left.
the elite made it. This is this is insane if you just think about it. A few days ago, this car was parked for dead. It sat for 29 years. The engine was locked up. The mice ate all the wiring out of it. The fuel system was trashed. The carb needed rebuilt. The ignition system was shot. But we fought through it, and today it drove 600 miles. I never touched a tool. In fact, I even got 13 miles to the gallon pushing wind in this old girl. It's just. It's unbelievable that even like the alternator, the water pump, the transmission, the rear end, I had no issues. So you Ford fans, you should be pretty proud of this one. I'm just, I just don't believe it. But I guess I got to, I'm looking at it. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. It was a hard week, but man, was it worth it. We got another one saved. Please consider getting some merchandise by scriptgarage.com. If you're not subscribed, please do that and hit that notification bell. We'll see you next time. I need a wobble pop right now.